It's easy to assume that global concerns like biodiversity loss don't mean much to people who face a daily struggle just to support their families. Yet the indigenous Batin Sembilan people of Sumatra believe looking after the rainforest is essential to maintaining their way of life. <laughs> Harapan rainforest in the south of the island has provided a sustainable living to these forest dwellers for generations. Although two-thirds the size of London, Harapan's just a tiny remnant of what were once vast Southeast Asian forests destroyed by logging and replaced by oil palm and timber plantations. But if properly managed, forests like these could not only support their local communities, but also remain a vital habitat for globally threatened wildlife. That's why the RSPB and its partners Burung Indonesia and BirdLife International have begun an ambitious management program to look after the Harapan rainforest. The partners have been issued with a forest management license. Only instead of logging, this license is for the protection and recovery of the ecosystem. In the past, Harapan has been logged heavily in parts and would have been devastated had this project not come about. Harapan rainforest is one of the last remnants of dry lowland forest in Sumatra one of the most biodiverse, but also one of the most threatened forests in the world. As such, it is of global importance for biodiversity, but it is also important for local communities because they depend on the forest for food, shelter, medicines, and also for water quality. Traditionally, the Batin Sembalang community lived by gathering rainforest products. Their semi-nomadic techniques had little impact on the environment. Since the 80s, these people have been under immense pressure as forest clearance for logs, oil palm and timber plantation has been taking away their livelihood. We make a living from tapping jungle rubber and collecting rattan. We also get many kinds of vegetables in the forest and plants for medicine. The forest is very important for indigenous people. We can't live if we don't have the forest. We don't have the skills or knowledge to survive outside. Now, however, our situation is improving as the Harapan Rainforest Project is involving people in many activities. One of the key aims of the Harapan Rainforest Project has been to create jobs in conservation for local people including members of the forest's indigenous communities. I was born and live within the forest. In the past, it was difficult for us to earn our living, but now life is becoming easier, and I'm employed here as a forest patrolman. Our community is happy to work with Harapan Rainforest. We can protect the forest together so that it exists forever and put a stop to illegal logging. Harapan Rainforest is helping in other ways, even if you don't work for the project, such as by providing free medical treatment. The project has also established a school for the forest's Batin Sembilan community. We have 40 students. Some are illiterate, but some can read, so we divide them into classes, usually at a grade one level. Having this Harapan Rainforest School means these indigenous children can now study like children outside the forest. We are using the same educational system they use in the city, so these kids will be able to work towards diplomas and be successful in the future. Dialogue between the Batin Sembalan people and the rainforest partners is key to the success of the Harapan project. 
We are setting up agreements with the local Simpang Machan villages that allow them to make use of the forest without destroying it. The agreements maintain their traditional way of life and look after their welfare, education and health while safeguarding the environment. This collaboration between Indonesians and foreign organizations like the RSPB is backed by the government. It's long term and benefits all parties. It gives us the skills we need to develop biodiversity and manage the ecosystem. Being able to continue living and working in the forest is critically important to the villagers. We like it here because this is our ancestors' area. We are happy if the Harapan Rainforest Project restores this forest. So long as we can still have access to this forest, it's no problem. We didn't like it when people came from outside this area and cleared our forest. We can't make a living if the rainforest is destroyed. We like our forests just the way it is. <laughs> This is a very rare type of forest. Hundred years ago there were about 16 million hectares. Today there are only four to five hundred thousand hectares left. But look at it. It has been, been locked once, twice, but it's still fantastic biodiversity. But it still takes a lot of work, hundred years, to really grow it back to where it once was. One of the biggest problems we are facing is the expansion of oil palm plantations, which has had a very bad effect on this region. These plantations need a great deal of water, so threaten the local water supply for people as well as wildlife. And oil palm is a monoculture, so not good for biodiversity. Animals cannot live there. We are conserving and protecting a fantastic habitat. This rainforest, like so many other rainforests around the world, contain millions and millions of tons of carbon. And protecting rainforest is a key part of the battle against climate change. A healthy rainforest is a natural regulator of the environment, helping to minimize climate change related problems such as flooding. A vital part of the conservation work within Harapan is the replanting of native trees. One of the approaches we use here at Harapan is to select 20 or 30 key tree species to plant out in open areas. Now these trees are selected because they grow quickly, they produce a wide shading canopy which will then shade out weeds underneath allowing seeds and seedlings to grow up beneath that canopy and importantly these trees are attractive to wildlife which will come in and feed on and disperse the seeds, which will help the forest regenerate naturally. Seeds are propagated in the Harapan Project Nursery. The seeds we plant and germinate in our nursery are collected from the forest. We replant them in seedling beds after two or three months. Our production target each year is one million seedlings. One such rare tree is bulia, globally logged for its very strong wood. It's very important that we restore and protect this species. The next step is to plant out the seedlings within the forest. This forest was good before the logging companies came here. Some parts of the forest will naturally regenerate, but in cleared areas like this, it is important that we replant seedlings in order to return it to its natural state. Then we monitor the seedlings every six months to measure their growth, find out how many are still alive and estimate the mortality level. Finding out what grows naturally within Harapan is an important part of the conservation project. 
survei flora yang dilaksanakan oleh As part of our restoration of this ecosystem, we conduct floral surveys to identify the vegetation that grows naturally in the forest. We'll be surveying a total 5,000 hectares of forest. From the data we've already gathered, we've identified 164 different species and 44 families of plants. Harapan rainforest is intensely rich in wildlife, home to some of the world's rarest animals. We survey animals in Harapan rainforest using two different methods. Firstly, we install camera traps to record any animals that walk in front of the lens. These might be big animals like tigers or tapirs. We also track the animals through the forest, looking for telltale signs such as footprints or scratch marks left by sun bears on the trees. Not all the conservation work is done on the forest floor. Project workers climb high into the upper canopy to install nest boxes as alternative housing for hornbills, including Sumatra's rhinoceros hornbill. Hornbills nest in holes in big trees high above the forest floor, but intensive logging in the past has meant that there are insufficient mature trees for nesting sites. One of the biggest threats to the wildlife and to the people living within Harapan are forest fires. At project headquarters, satellite images alert conservation staff to the possible outbreak and location of blazes. Teams of firefighters are able to respond to reports within minutes. Of course, prevention is always better than cure and a workforce of more than 200 forest rangers employed by the project patrol Harapan to stop firelighting and illegal logging. If they do come across trespassers, they point out the logging restrictions and boundaries. As a forest patrolman, I help to protect this forest from destruction done by irresponsible men. We indigenous people would be very sad if outsiders were to destroy our forest. That's why we are prohibiting them from cutting down the timber. The project is still in its infancy. Much has already been accomplished, but there's a great deal more work to be done before Harapan is fully restored and local communities fully benefit from its potential. By improving the lives of the people in and around Harapan rainforest, we will be able to demonstrate to them the tangible benefits for their lives of forest restoration and forest conservation. Relations with local communities are critical to the success of this effort.